Mr. President, um, I appreciate the comments of my colleague from Arkansas and, and prior to him, uh, those from Missouri and um, Wyoming, and we'll be hearing in a minute from a colleague here from Nebraska, all of whom are expressing the sentiments that are conveyed to them by their constituents in their individual states about the very real and very personal impacts that Obamacare is having on them. Last night in the President's State of the Union speech, he sort of glanced over that issue. Um, it's kind of the equivalent of a drive-by, sort of acknowledged the law, said it's not going to change, and if Republicans have better ideas, then come forward with them. Well, you just heard the senator from Missouri, Senator Blunt, list off 10 or 12 things that we think could be done that would be dramatically different and dramatically uh, a dramatic improvement and, and a, a very different approach from what is included in Obamacare, which is a heavy-handed, uh, government-driven um, solution to health care, which essentially puts the uh, health care in this country, which is one-sixth of our economy, uh, under the political control here in Washington, D.C. And, and, and as a consequence of that, what we're seeing out there is higher premiums, higher out-of-pocket costs in the form of deductibles and co-pays, canceled coverages, and fewer choices when it comes to doctors and hospitals. That's been the real-world impact of the passage of Obamacare. And the President said when he was running for office that he was going to reduce health care costs by $2,500 per family. We now know that they've gone up since he's taken office by about $2,500 per family. And they continue to go up uh, all the time. We hear consistently from our constituents in our individual states, and those, are, those stories that are being shared this morning I think are just good examples, again, of, of the real-world impacts of this law and why uh, it is so important that we go back, start over, do this the right way with reforms that actually address the issue of creating more competition, more choice for individuals, uh, allow market forces in the world of health care as opposed to having this, uh, this overreaching uh, government approach, which clearly hasn't worked. And the one thing that I, many of us got up and talked about when Obamacare was being debated is the fact that there really wasn't anything in there that constrained utilization or that, that put downward pressure on costs. And so costs keep going up. That keeps getting passed on. Taxes keep going up. They keep getting passed on. And what does that mean? Well, for middle-class families, it means higher premiums and higher deductibles, higher co-pays, and in many cases, fewer jobs, because that's the impact it's having on the economy. And it, and it really worsens the very thing the president says he's most concerned about, and that's the issue of inco income inequality. Because when you are driving up the cost for consumers in this country in their daily lives, and, and I would say health care for, for most people is a very significant cost, and I would add energy to that, but those are a couple of things where we have seen policies that have made it more expensive for middle-class Americans to make ends meet. And health care is certainly an example of that. And I'd like to share just a couple of, uh, of examples from my state. And, of course, as uh, has been mentioned earlier by my colleagues, we hear these from the form of email, uh, letters, phone calls coming into our offices, lest anybody think that what we do here is done in a vacuum. These are not abstract issues. These are very real, personal issues. Uh, experiences that people across this country are having. This is from a constituent in Harrisburg, South Dakota, which is a, a growing community uh, near Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a growing, vibrant community. It's, it says, I, my wife and I have been fortunate to have become small business owners and entrepreneurs. So far, we've been successful of living the American dream for the last three years and have seen great success of what we do. Unfortunately, with Obamacare, we're needing to make choices I never thought we'd have to make. Based on the rates for health insurance, we would be paying approximately $800 out of pocket per month. Essentially, we're thrown in to make an additional house payment per month or face a penalty at the end of the year and not have health insurance. Constituent goes on to say, needless to say, I'm very disappointed and upset right now. I feel I'm being taken advantage of because I'm a small business owner and wanted to live the American dream. Uh, this is another uh, constituent from Rapid City who says, and this was in a form of a letter regarding the President's broken promises. He says, bottom line is the President lied to us. He said if we like our policy, we can keep it. He said we would be saving around $2,500 a year. Wrong on both accounts. He then concludes when our policy expires, it will be canceled and we'll have to pay almost triple what we're paying now. Those are um, examples from my state of South Dakota. 
Uh, my colleague from Arkansas shared some examples from him. I know uh, my colleague, my neighbor from Nebraska, Senator Johans, hears many of those same stories coming from his state. He represents people very much like those I represent in South Dakota who in many cases make their livings the same way, but are just experiencing the economic consequence of a bad policy, a failed policy, a bad law uh, that was rushed through here, and, um, and the, they're now American people, unfortunately, are experiencing the impacts, the adverse impacts of that on their own personal economic lives, and in a broader sense, on our economy nationally. Uh, higher costs, canceled coverages, fewer choices in the form of doctors and hospitals, and fewer jobs for American workers that we want to get back to work. That's the real world experience. There's a better way. Senator from Missouri talked about many of those ideas. I hope with the president can work, would work with us to repeal this bad law and start over in a way that makes sense for the American people and for our health care economy in this country. Mr. President, I, I yield the floor.